up in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and they were back with the Papa G's. Right now we're at the Big Pig Jig in Vienna, Georgia. Uh, we cook <laughs> shoulders and ribs. Normally what we do is cook anywhere from 14 to 16 contests a year, so right now we're in about our 14th contest this year. Uh, as of today's standing, we're the number five team of the nations. Today we're cooking ribs, and what I want to do is tell you a little bit about our cooker. As you can tell, it's a propane tank that we've got to How we control the temperature in our cooker is through the firebox in the back. We have the main chute with two slides, two side chutes, and the smokestack. We do not have a divider in our cooker, but we do have water pans. Since we cook in two categories, like my husband's cooked shoulders, he cooks between 210 at 215, and with ribs, I cook between 190 and 205. So how we control it is strictly through the slides, and that's all. I want to tell you that we cook with all natural charcoal. We get this from Memphis, Tennessee. And you're going to taste a sweeter rib today because we cook with cherry wood. Cherry is uh, not going to give it a bitter flavor like hickory will. Uh, it's not going to turn the ribs black like hickory will. So we've tried several kinds of wood. I think you will enjoy this because it will be a sweeter taste than what you're used to. So what we'll do is we'll go around to the cooker, we'll talk about the ribs, our rub, and our sauce. Okay, now that we're up in the cooker, I want to tell you a little bit about our ribs. We use ribs from Curly's, which is out of Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, we use a two and down baby back rib. Two and down means it's two pounds and down per slab. Um, what we do is we cook our ribs for six hours. We cook them with the skin on. We start the ribs skin side down. Uh, I cover the ribs with magic dust, which is our own rub. Uh, it's, a, it's a consistency of salt, pepper, um, a little lemon powder, garlic powder, and uh, a couple of little secret ingredients. I can't tell you all or we wouldn't be the winners that we are. Uh, what, what I do is when I put, first put them on the grill, I leave them on there for two hours before I turn them because I want that dust to completely cook on the rib. Uh, when you first put them on cooking between 190 and 200 degrees, your ribs are going to sweat. So uh, I don't want to turn them over and, and lose the dust that I've got on there. Okay, after the two hours, what I do is I turn the, turn the ribs over. Now I have a meat side down. I start basting them with a solution of vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, uh, vinegar, water, uh, a little lemon juice, and um, uh, how many water I use some fruit juices in there also, uh, some citrus and fruit juices. So Then what I do after that is about every 20 minutes I start basting, uh, like I said, for six hours. Uh, the last 30 minutes before I take the ribs off, we take our barbecue sauce and we dilute it with water. The reason we do that, uh, I think in competition, uh, I, want, I want you to come and taste the, the rub, I want you to taste the meat, I want you to taste the cherry and a little bit of the sauce because that's what you're judging is a combination of meat and sauce. If I put a real thick sauce on there, all you're, that is all you're going to taste. And I've spent too much time trying to present this product to you uh, so that I can get all tins in this one uh, and go into finals. So what I've got, um, since the last judge just left and we haven't heard about finals yet, I do have this one slab left. The others I am saving for finals. We, we cook one case at a time which is, uh, in our particular case, in this two and down baby back, we'll get 17 to 18 slabs per, per case. So, um, serving, I generally serve three in, blind, in the blind container and one per judge. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what you're looking for. I know you've learned this in judging school. What I've done, even though I cook them with the uh, skin on, what I'm going to do is I generally have a little tool and I go and I simply remove the skin off the back, okay? Sometimes it'll come completely off in one large sheet. Sometimes you've got to sit here and pick at it just a little bit. But basically what you're looking for is a rib that's got a little bit of tug. We'll do this again when I serve it to you at the table. I will give you two bones for you to be able to pull it. So as you pull, you still got a little bit of tug, but as you can see, it comes clean off the bone. And that's what you're looking for. It's nice and moist inside. One thing, a good test of your ribs is the end piece. A lot of people won't serve this because it's real dry, but as you can see, it's still nice and moist and tender on the inside. 
Plus, this has got the good bark down here at the end that everybody likes the best. So now we'll go down to the table. We'll let you try and uh, see what you think. Leave a lemon. Is it good? Let me see that final lemon. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's But it's very important, and right. it's and people don't. A lot of people won't do it because it does take some effort. But you have to work it down. You see that the membrane is stripping right off now. Uh, it's real, real easy to do. Uh -uh. Right. Right. Here at Harry's, we could do it any time. And it doesn't. It, and it just doesn't take but just uh, a second. No. It's, oh, it takes, takes more, more than a second. A couple minutes. All right, here we, here we go. It's beginning to move. And I can tell you this, if you can get them to do it before the meat leaves the shop, you're going to be much happier than you will if you do it once you get it at home. Oh, it here it comes. Hold those up and let me show the folks a comparison of what the ribs look like, the strip rib versus the rib that... Rubber. Uh, yeah, we, on our rib, we start out with a, a two and a half pound uh, loin back rib. We trim it down uh, to make it consistent in size throughout. We use a brown sugar-based dry rub. Uh, we coat it completely backside and top. Uh, cook it for about two hours, approximately 250 degrees. We move it and we steep it in a cooler. And we place it back on the cooker for an additional hour and, and then we feel like we have an ultimate product. Here are Jack Downs in Lynchburg, Tennessee and we're the Pyro Pig Maniacs. I'm John Snyder and this is Max Loudenslager, our chief cook. And we're here to try to win again. Last year we won this sucker. So we're going to try to come here and do it again this year. Uh, our categories this year are whole hog, shoulders, and ribs. Neither one of us are the rib cookers, but, <laughs> but we know the process. Uh, first of all, uh, just like we do our shoulders, we trim the ribs a little bit. Um, cooking time on the ribs is about seven hours. So they're prepared, first of all, um, with a coating of regular mustard, just any brand old plain common prepared mustard. mustard which uh, holds a dry rub. And they're, they're coated with dry rub. Uh, they're cooked for four hours with this dry rub. And they're usually double stacked and rotated every couple of hours so that they baste each other. Then after that four hours, they're wrapped in aluminum foil with about a half a cup of pineapple juice and sealed for another two hours. Now that tenderizes the meat. Then for the last hour, we put on a a coating of barbecue sauce and honey which gives them their final taste. That's reduced on it makes a nice glaze to the rib mm -hmm. itself. So it's it's a wet rib is what we end up with, mm -hmm. uh, what we call in Memphis. Well it, it has been, it's, it's done pretty good for us uh, over, over the last few years. Hello I'm Jim Benjamin, Rowdy Southern Swan from Kosuth, Mississippi. We're down in South Haven, Mississippi for the uh, South Haven Spring Festival barbecue contest. We're cooking ribs this morning. We uh, cook ribs and whole hog, but we're cooking just ribs today. We uh, cooked the Memphis in May circuit. We've been on the circuit for probably eight years. We've cooked for probably 15 years total. Uh, we do showmanship when uh, we go to Memphis. The team members behind me are getting ready to put our finals on. 
We cook our ribs at right around 240 degrees. Cook them for probably three hours at that temperature with a mixture of dry rub. It has 13 spices. We run it through a coffee grinder to, to get it down to where it don't ball up. The spices that we buy here tend to be just a little bit big for what we want to do with them. About every 30 minutes, we'll baste our ribs with a mixture of uh, olive oil and apple juice. It gives it, the olive oil makes the juice stick. It gives it a real good caramel looking color. And, and when our ribs get to the color that we want them to get, we drop the heat and take the smoke out. And we don't, we don't smoke them anymore. All we do is just put heat on them. What we're doing now, we're getting our finals ready. And what Scott's done is taking the thick part off these uh, loin back ribs. I really do hate to do this, but it, if, if you're going to do competition, it's something that you've got to do. You've got to trim up on those things a little bit because if you don't, it'll tend to have just a little bit of uh, fat on it. A real good barbecue judge won't mind a little fat on a rib because you've got to have it because it gives it better flavor. But for looks and things, you've got to take it off. And what he's doing there is just trimming it back to where it'll be uniform. He's taking uh, some of the ragged ends, like right here, he's cutting that part off. We'll keep it and we'll, we'll eat on it while uh, uh, we're getting the, the finals, you know. Well, it's good eating, it's just not pretty. It's, it's good eating, but it's just not pretty. And you know, in order to win, it's got to look good to the judges too. That's part of it. But myself, I hate throwing it away. Whenever we cook at home, we don't throw nothing like that right there away. Two and a half down. These are two and a half down right here. Like I said, see what he's cutting off? Now that, there ain't nothing wrong with that right there, but it's too thick for competition. It, it just, it'll, it'll be done, this part right here. I'm gonna cook that right there just as done as any other part of it. As a matter of fact, we give our on-site judges a whole slab of ribs and we tell them, hey, you know, we want you to taste this big rib right here and we want you to taste this little rib right here and then we want you to taste the one in the middle. They're all going to taste the same. They're all going to be cooked the same, done this. They're all going to come off the bone the same. Bone ain't going to just twist out, but you can pick this rib, this slab of ribs up. You can pick it up and handle it. But when you give it a little tug to pull the ribs apart, it's going to come clean. And when you take a bite of it, it's going to come clean of the bone. That tells you that the rib is done. And these ribs are going to have a real, real pretty red color on the inside when they get done. Ribs, there's, there's not but a 15 minute window on a slab of ribs from the time that it gets done until it's at its prime best for judging. you got a 15 minute window. That's the reason these barbecue contests, they'll give you precise times that they're going to come by and they're going to judge you. You ready. You ready. You know exactly what time they're going to come by and you, you, you adjust your cooking time for that right there. Welcome to the airport crew. Uh, as you probably know, we're from Memphis, Tennessee, which means two things, Southern hospitality, and the most important thing, it really means Southern cooking. And what do I mean by Southern cooking? Well, our forefathers thought we didn't need water pans and we don't need water pans here today cooking. Direct heat means that the food is directly over the coals. We have 30 inches between the coals and the meat. Today, we've cooked several things, but I'm going to talk a little bit about our ribs in just a minute. We started out 10 years ago in patio porkers. All we started out with was a 55-gallon drum. About four years ago, we had so much fun in patio porkers, we decided to go on the circuit. We actually cooked two times four years ago, three times two years ago. Then last year, we cooked 29 weekends, and we ended up being number three in the Memphis and May circuit. Now, when we started out, when we were patio porkers, we went around and decided what kind of grill do we need. This grill right here was designed on the back of a napkin in McDonald's. First of all, we knew we had to have the gauge, so we made this a 10 gauge cooker. And the reason that is, it keeps the smoke in and it keeps the heat in. 
That's very important when you're talking about direct heat. Because direct heat also means you cook at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. All of our cookers that you see here are built exactly the same. What we have is a, a cooker that is designed to make sure that whenever we go from one cooker to the other, it doesn't make any difference, it's at 200 degrees. We have found that 200 degrees at the appropriate time will allow us to make our best cooking. For example, our hogs are cooked for 24 hours. Our shoulders are cooked for 22 hours, and the ribs I'm gonna show you are cooked for eight hours. Now, to, have, to start out, you gotta have a firebox, and we're gonna show you that firebox in a minute. And it does also two things. Number one, it takes all the impurities of the charcoal out as you're getting it hot. And number two, with direct heat, you really have to keep it at that 200 degrees I was talking about. And with that charcoal, when you put it in red hot, there is no variation in the temperature. You can see we have two gauges on this grill, and that gauge is making sure that one end of the grill is not hotter than the other. Now we take our ribs, and first thing we do, we marinate it with our own award-winning dry rub. We just rub that dry rub into the ribs after we take the skin off. And then after that period of time of two hours, we put them onto the grill. And then we cook them for six hours, again at 200 degrees. At the end of six hours, we take them off the grill and put them in aluminum foil. And then we put our award-winning sauce on it, which we've won many times on our sauce, and we actually then wrap it up in the aluminum foil and cook it for an additional two hours. So you can see we got two hours of preparation, a total of eight hours at 200 degrees. Now let me kind of show you a little bit about our ribs. These ribs are one and three quarter down ribs. That means it's the best ribs you can get. It's right next to the tenderloin. We, uh, we have tried and we have cooked uh, many different styles, but we found that the one and three quarter down is a lot better than the two or the two and a quarter. We buy our ribs from the same place in Memphis, Tennessee, because they know the type of cut we need, and they know when, when we're cooking, they want to make sure that we have the best ribs that they have. During the six hours that we're cooking it before it's wrapped, we're constantly spraying it with concentrated apple juice. So you know you have the apple wood underneath and you have the concentrated apple juice on top. Now you know that he, as a chief cook, we would never lie to a judge. But I must tell you that we do have one extra secret. When we get our hogs when they're really, really young as a piglet, we go out there and feed them with our apple juice and with our sauce. And we're making sure that those piglets are getting ready. And then after we do that, we feed them, and they get about six months old, we feed them with, actually with apples. And then you, now you see that you have the apple sauce inside after you eat it, you got the apple concentrate on top, you got the apple wood below. Examples of what we're cooking. We're cooking 80 slabs of ribs. We're cooking, you can see here our shoulder, excuse me, our butts. We're cooking 35 butts. We're cooking 20 pounds of bologna. We're cooking 60 pounds of chicken. And we're also cooking uh, about 25 pounds of baked beans. So you can see we have a variety of what we're cooking. It again, it is all done the Southern style, over direct heat, and we think that uh, that's the best way.